In an apocalyptic future, when dinosaurs rule the earth, one man with a PhD in awesomeness will take a stand. Meet Professor. Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal and welcome back to Earthbound. Last time, we got quite a few levels under our belts as we beat up some fobbies and we beat up some uncontrollable spheres. First of all, they're one of the most annoying enemies in the game, but also they have a 1 in 128 drop. In 4 minutes and like 11 seconds or something, I got the Broken Antenna, which is Jeff's ultimate weapon, which upgrades at 65 IQ to the Gaia Beam, which is an amazing weapon. And if you look at Jeff's IQ, it's still 61. Yeah, I wasn't able to farm him up in between episodes because that would involve me loading up the previous save, which meets us back at the Tenda Tribe, and then farming from there, which I should have made my restore point as soon as I uh, had gotten the the uh, the thing, the the broken antenna, because that would allow would have allowed me to farm up more and then meet you back here like nothing had changed. But I made a mistake there and I apologize and I'm not able to go back because there is not a, uh, a backtracking option in Lumen Hall. The only way to get out of here is by going forward or forward and then down as the exit is a hole right here. So in typical Pikmin style, even though this is not Pikmin, we will jump down the hole and uh, have no cares, fall thousands of feet to our deaths and be unscathed. Welcome to the Lost Underworld, the biggest area in the entire game. You thought Dusty Dune Desert was big? No. This is the biggest area, as we're only about four or five pixels, t uh, pixels tall, and this area is gigantic. The trees themselves are many times our height, which is something that we haven't seen thus far. Usually we're about half the height of trees, but this time, no. The trees are to scale, finally, uh, and the enemies are also to scale, as the lost underworld is lost, and it's also the underworld. So, using creative license, the designers are able to put anything they so desire in here, and they chose to throw in some dinosaurs. I can only picture the disaster at the, uh, the brainstorming table as they're like, hmm, uh, we need some new enemies, uh, what should we call them? Um, dinosaurs! Oh yeah, that's good. We just sold the game. But this game truly does have everything, so I don't mind. And also, Earthbound's random, so it's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and steal some damage to the Wetnosaurs. They are they are pretty powerful, but if you manage to not let them get off an attack, which I actually made a mistake here. Biting attack, a lot of damage. Uh, let's go ahead and heal that up. They do a lot of damage, though they're not nearly as annoying as the uncontrollable spheres. Plus, I've farmed up to a fairly invincible level in um, last episode, so I'm feeling I'm feeling fairly strong. And also, with the double PSI freezes, I have a big chance of solidifying them. So I'm not really worried, honestly. Yeah, it's tame. Though there are some enemies here besides the Wetnosaurs that are much more difficult. So, like I said, the Lost Underworld is a gigantic area, and since we're so small, it seems like slow going. Although, zoom this in, and it, we're really traveling pretty pretty quickly. We're we're almost running right now. Uh, there are presents scattered throughout the area. There there are actually there actually aren't that many presents, though the presents that are here are pretty good. Uh, back there, there was a hole in the ground, which I'm surprised didn't actually actually do what it was supposed to do, but periodically there will be earthquakes, and I need to avoid this dinosaur. There will be earthquakes, and those holes in the ground will spew out geysers, or as the English call them so lovingly, geysers. And if a geyser uh, springs, hopefully I can trigger it. Can it please go? It's supposed to happen like every 30 seconds, but it's not, it's not happening. This isn't happening for me. Oh, there it is. Okay, let's move down a little bit. That geyser is blue, and if we were to examine it after taking some damage, it would have healed all of our PP and HP, so that's pretty nice. Plus, there are a couple of red geysers spread throughout that will heal status ailments, also pretty useful. You're strange, but you smell good. So, I'll tell you a secret. Did you feel an earthquake a little while ago? You know, we have earthquakes all the time here. After an earthquake, the hot springs will erupt. The blue springs are great for recovering health, and the red springs are perfect for healing paralysis or drawing out poison, which I can presume are the status ailments in this area. 
And right on cue, we get another earthquake. The bird right there says strange words like hello, and click bleep. So let's examine him. This is a phone, which will allow me to save and do a couple things. Ring, ring. Let's go ahead and call mom first. Don't say a word. I know exactly what you're thinking. My son. Who'd have thought he was such a brave kid? Oh yeah, you're a hero, honey. Click beep beep beep. So if we had homesickness, now it's cured. But also, I'd like to call my father and show it because he deposited, oh my wow, $64,000 into our bank account. Taking away what you've spent, you should now have uh, $183,000 in the bank. Wow. Okay, so we hit, a, we hit a threshold a couple episodes ago where we just are now independently wealthy. And that carries over very well as we are now independently wealthy. Good night, sleep tight. Okay, I'd like to change the text boxes and also have a save file, so I'll meet you right back. Hello, this is Escargo Express. <laughs> I just <laughs> couldn't find your location. You must be somewhere really strange. <laughs> I've decided honestly that I should give up. I'm out of here. <laughs> Sometimes this happens, you know? Click beep. Ha. That was real funny. You told a joke. And I didn't I didn't really laugh because it wasn't that funny. But sadly Escargo Express cannot reach me here, and off screen I did indeed change something refreshing. There is another earthquake. Yeah, I'll be dealing with those a lot. Now, deep darkness, like I said, is a gigantic area, uh, but it's it's really not that difficult. After dealing with uncontrollable spheres last time, I'm pretty much prepared to handle anything, and dinosaurs aren't that bad. They're really easy to dodge as they can get stuck in between trees easily, um, and they're really not that problematic. And if you use a map to find out where things are, there's n there isn't much troubles to be had. There really aren't. If I can avoid this dinosaur, oh, I thought that was solid. Oh yeah, that was easy. I did not take any damage. So while I get this, uh, let's see, what is this? I believe this is the C pendant. Yes, it is. The C pendant is an equipable. It's a charm that. Let's see if I need to get this to let's use it on anyone. Uh, it's uh, it's one of the best charms in the game. It protects from fire freeze and flash attacks, plus gives 20 defense. So it's a really good item. I'm going to be giving it to Paula since the only thing she has is the night pendant and. Actually, I might even have I might even have Paula discard the night pendant though. No, I don't think I should. I'll keep I'll hold on to it for safekeeping. Um and have her equip that. The night pendant is replaced with the C pendant. Pretty good. So now she's protected from some of the more devastating attacks. So, while I'm while I'm just walking around since this is pretty boring, I would like to talk about something that I haven't talked about enough apparently. E3. I tuned out Nintendo after their second day, mainly because I was busy on the third day, so I didn't really, I didn't really bother looking to see what they did, because I was pretty sure that the rest of what of their showing was going to be a major disappointment. I was dead wrong. I was completely wrong on this. You know why? Because on the third day, I'm pretty sure it was the third day. Man, if it was the first or second day and I missed it, I feel bad. But I'm pretty sure it was the third day. They, they topped everyone's E3 performance with this one trailer. You know why? It's not necessarily because of what it what they announced. It's that they announced it, period. Because it shows that they're now listening to the fans a little bit better. After, the, for the first time in 25 years they have done this. They started off a trailer with some music that I have come to know and love very well. And they announced Earthbound Beginnings. For the first time, Mother One is coming to America, and I will be able to play it for my Let's Play next year. I was already planning on playing it, uh, to be to be fair, but I was going to have to use an emulator because, sadly, uh, I they haven't released it up until now. But now I'll be able to buy it, which is great. It is really great, and I don't like dealing with with emulators anyway because they're kind of a nightmare to deal with if you don't know how to do it or if you just don't do it often. And so now I won't have to deal with that. I'll be able to get it straight on the uh, Wii U uh, Virtual Console, which is amazing. And it means that it's a good step in the right direction for Nintendo, as Mother 3 is just yet to come. I hope they release Mother 3 for uh, American Americans. A chubby, obnoxious kid from some foreign country said something dis uh, heartrending. So I'm healing my wounds in Hot Springs. That's a 
good way to do it, I guess. Okay, that's a red spring, by the way. Actually, no, wow, game, thank you. Man, you're, you're great on the cues. I was just gonna say, that's a red spring, and the game's gonna show me. And it would heal status ailments, but I have none, because I am not bad at Earthbound. I think this Let's Play, play has done, done me good, or well, or whatever, in making me better. You guys smell really good. Sniff, sniff, sniff. Who am I? I'm a tenda. Or who am I? I'm a tenda. Hey, what are you doing inside? <laughs> what are you doing inside our dinosaur cage? I'm going to open the door and you get out of there right now. I'm the boss, so I'll let you out. That's great. Thank you for the tenda kraut. Ness's tenda kraut was stolen. The awful smell surrounding the group is now gone. Why, uh, why, ugh. why don't you see the talkative mystery rock? That rock really jabbers away. Even though I listened to the talkative Mystery Rock story, and now his name's capitalized, I don't understand what he's talking about. Thank you for coming all the way into this primitive country. You must be tired. To stay, it will cost you, or it will run you $400. You're going to stay, aren't you? Uh, not yet. I, once, I, I do have plans on getting Jeff's IQ to 65, in which case I will stay the night, but not yet. We made a cage for dinosaurs and locked them up. That's what my brother tells me, but I don't believe it. He's just spewing out of his cake hole. It sounds like you're right, because I'm not sure you understand how caves work. It's sort of like, it's actually identical to saying that uh, continents are not islands, when in reality they're kind of, they kind of are. Didn't you, uh, didn't you think that the Tenda up above have some particularly beautiful women? They're still shy, though. We are the same Tenda as those above ground. We seem different? Yeah, you know, Tenda up there are shy and don't like to talk. Yeah, I like to talk. Do you like to talk? I like to talk. Tendo like to talk him to the deep, uh, the lost underworld because we can't stand, we couldn't stand the quiet up above. So we es established a separate tribe. I hope we can be friendly again someday. Yeah, it was a lot easier to live uh, live up above. Okay, every time we talk to these people, is it just earthquakes happening or is that just a random event? Because it's kind of crazy. Don't feed the dinosaurs in the cage. The boss. Seems like the boss needs some adjustments. Okay, how do I get back there? That's the question of the year. How I do? Oh, I can get through here. You're a foreigner, aren't you? I am a worldwide tenda. I was an exchange student for who traveled to a country that is known as an economic superpower. My name is Igo Steek. Uh, wait, what? Igo, S Igo Steek. Igo Steek. Igo Steek. That's probably like a mad gab, but I'm not getting it. Let me know if I can do anything for you. Shall I loan you some money? Uh, if you want to draw, I'll, ch I'll charge you a hand. Ooh. Okay, so that's why we're getting so much money. Yes, that's okay. Withdraw. How much do you want to withdraw? I don't want to withdraw much. More like... Actually, $20,000 I think is enough. Yeah, that's fine. Take it. Yeah, it was. Now you're rich off of me. Although I was already rich, to be fair. Let's play store. My friend Igo loves this game. So, hi. May I help you? Are you looking for anything in particular? Yes, I am looking for the ultimate bat, which won't won't help me for that many episodes actually I'm gonna sell first but um it won't help me for that many episodes because I'm going to be getting the gutsy bat soon which is Ness's ultimate weapon though I will invest in the ultimate bat since it's been a while since I've gotten a new weapon but first I would like to do some selling and I will cut to when I finish doing my shoppy stuff all right I actually found out that I had nothing to sell which is surprising uh, the only thing that I want to get rid of is the monkey's love, and I haven't been able to do that because I just forget, or I'm in an area of the game where I can't do it. Ultimate bat, who's going to carry this? Nest, do you want to try equipping it here? Yes. It went up by, what is that, like, 15? 14. So it went up by 14, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, you take my old bat, and then, what else? You can take, I can get the holy fry pan, which is the best item for Paula. In fact, quick story, um... There is a magic fry pan that is a 1 in 128 drop in this area. It gives 50 offense and 100 guts. While this is actually better stats than what I'm getting for, from the holy fry pan, this one gives 80 and uh, 10, 80 offense, 10 luck. Um, the magic fry pan has a 25% chance of missing, so that's kind of bad, but also it's just not worth it. It really isn't. Uh, I'll equip it here. And this does more damage straight up. So really, the reason why you'd want the magic fry pan is if you want bash attacks as Paula, because it's doing less damage, but it has a much higher chance of doing bashes. Uh, but yeah, I'm not really interested, and it's going to be one of the the, the only. It's going to be the uh, one. It's going to be the one 
1 in 28 ultimate weapon that I'm not getting because it's really not as ultimate as it proclaims to be. Shiny Coin gives defense, I believe, and luck. So let's give it to him. Uh, do you want to buy your lucky coin? Yes, please, take it. I don't want it. Uh, and also, what else can I do? Mammoth Burger. Actually, that's it. I don't really want any healing items, so that's that's all I want. I only spent $4,000, and I, it actually cost me 20000 Oops. That was an accident. Let's go ahead and deposit that. Hopefully he doesn't charge, uh, charge a deposit fee. I don't think he does. Uh, I really do don't think he does. But it's fine. Uh, let's see. One and... One and eight and four. I'll hold on to 5,000 bucks. Why not? It's fun. Now, goodbye and good riddance. So, now that we've done this, we can continue on and I can continue with my story about... Um, Earthbound Beginnings, or Mother One, which I'll probably consistently call it. The way that they announced it is just so nostalgic. Nintendo knows what they're doing in this particular area, or avenue, because they consistently pull on the heartstrings of Mother fans. Uh, with the Earthbound trailer, they just... Like, they, they make you misty-eyed, even if you haven't played the game. They, they know that it's an experience that is full of nostalgia for thousands of people. Just to take a break from my, my monologue about Mother One, this is foreshadowing for later. Things that I'm seeing here will be seen later in the game, and remember this area. I didn't know it existed until I recorded this episode, and I was taken aback. It, it gave me chills, man. You'll see it later, and it will give you chills as well. So, we're actually almost at our destination, and we're not that far into the episode either. We're only... yeah, we're only 14 minutes. This is going to be either an extremely short episode, or I'm just going to do partial of what is to come. Actually, no, yeah, I'm going to farm too, so that'll be a thing. But I'm, I'm just really appreciative that Nintendo does recognize what, what Mother fans want. But also, I'm appreciative of the step that they've taken in, in doing this, because what they're doing is they're... They're acknowledging that people want, uh, want Mother in America, and they're, they're doing it, which means Mother 3 is almost confirmed to come soon. Maybe next year, I don't know, but it's coming, which is, I'm hyped about that too. Hopefully it'll come out before I let's play it. Okay, uh, we got the Cloak of Kings, which is the final set, or su final item in the Set of Kings series. This item gives 20 defense and 40 speed. Pretty good item. And it's a, one of Pooh's. It is one of Pooh's only four items that he can equip. And now he looks beautiful. I wish there was some, some official art that I could find of what he looks like dressed up all like this. Uh, there's probably a lot of fan art. In fact, I guarantee it. But it's just really cool. And now his stats look great. And I have all of his items. Great. First time I've ever done that. Okay, let's continue on. Let's see, we're we're almost there, aren't we? I think so. I think we're almost there. Yeah, there's another rest spot here. Yeah, okay. So yeah, we're actually here. We're, we are here. There's a geyser right there. Can I get past these trees? Thank you. And there are uh, there's a rest spot here, which I won't use. Uh, but also, this area is where you would... The best place to farm for the uh, the magic fry pan, which I'm not going to be doing. In, in case of danger, evacuate here, the boss. And there's a tenda in here. And... Actually, now that I realize it, that bird is gigantic. He's he's twice the size of Ness. That's kind of crazy. Here, the dinosaurs don't come and attack me, so I can relax. Except now I can't get out. That's sad. <laughs> you don't have my powers of evasion. You can't match my fanciful diner manners. Okay, if these er if these earthquakes can just stop, we can get into this cave, which is our ultimate destination. But before we go in here, I would like to get uh, Jeff prepared for the battle to come. So I'm going to farm up a little bit, just so he gets up to 65 IQ, and then I'm going to be going through that cave into the area beyond. This episode is going to be shorter than most other episodes, m simply because last time it was a 40 minute experience, and I don't want you guys to uh, have to sit through another long episode. This is the Chomposaur, which has a 1 in 128 chance of dropping the magic fry pan. It'd be cool if I, act, if I ended up getting one of these, but I doubt I will. Uh, it's, it's worth my while to use my strongest attacks here, as, what, as there is a, a spring nearby that I can just 
heal up on. So I will farm off of these enemies and I will be right back. And like a bird or a plane or Superman, I arrive back at the village. It didn't take me too long, in fact, I just wanted to teleport there to show you that you can teleport in uh, the Lost Underworld, uh, because I took the opportunity to teleport out, because farming on off of those dinosaurs was taking far too long, so I needed to go to the next, be next best place, which was, in fact, uh, Lumen Hall. I went back there, farmed up on some bobbies, and now I have the Gaia Beam. In fact, it didn't take that many levels, because I got an O Baby on IQ, so he's only, what, like, what is that, like two or three levels above what he was before, before the cut? So now he's looking great, and if I equip this, I want to show off just how high, just how much of, a, of an offense upgrade it is. So right now it is at 155, and when I upgrade to the Gaia Beam, it will go up to 190. That is really good. 190. And that's his ultimate weapon. So now he should be able to use it very well uh, to great effect next episode. Let's see. Death Ray. Drop. Got rid of the death ray. And now these inventories are looking fantastic. I have the ultimate bat for Ness. I have Paula's ultimate weapon in the form of the holy fry pan. Jeff's, which is the Gaia beam. And Pooh's, which is his entire inventory. Pretty good. Uh, like, I am finalizing this into the the end game inventory. There are a couple uh, 1 and 128 items that I'm interested in getting, uh, and in fact I may try to get them, and they're not ultimate weapons, but in fact they're pendants uh, that do different things, but I'm interested in getting those just so I can go to the end game with the best possible stats. Okay, now I realized when I was farming that I forgot to talk to this rock, and I apologize for that. You finally came, Ness. Finally, you could talk to me. Listen, Ness, I'm going to tell you something very important. You may want to take notes. Ready? You're the chosen one. Your destiny is not only yours, it's the destiny of the whole universe. There will be a time in which all of you in the universe will overlap each other. It's not necessary to understand now. Do you remember Giant Step in Onet? That is one of your sanctuaries. It is a, st a spot that gives you power and allows you to realize all your skills. There was a monster that protected it. The monster was influenced by the power of the place. You must have beaten those monsters. You must reach all of the eight power spots in the world. When the soundstone records the melodies of all eight power spots, you can finally see your world. I'll tell you all the power spots. One is in Giant Step in Onnit. The other, another is Lilliput Steps in Peaceful Rest Valley near Tucson. Milky Well and Grapefruit Falls in Saturn Valley. Rainy Circle found by Jeff in Winters. Magnet Hill at the edge of the city of Forside. Pink Cloud, which Pooh knows. And Lumen Hole, where the Shining Lichen lives in the cave. A new place is now going to is now going to be opened up to you. Fire Spring, located southwest of here. Listen to the melodies of all eight power spots. If you do not fail, you may upset Gygas' plans. Understand, Ness? The time will come. The time will come when the destiny of you and the entire universe will overlap. It is fast approaching. The hot spring energizes you completely. And the fire spring, which the talking rock mentioned, is right here. I took the uh, opportunity to cut down so you wouldn't have to see me backtrack. I apologize for waiting so long to, uh, to go back and find him, but it works because I would like to end the episode off early. Now that I've farmed and got Jeff the Gaia Beam, I feel like I am in a good spot to to try and tackle the fire spring next episode. It is the final your sanctuary location and will unlock the the ability to go to Ness's world, which we haven't heard about until now, but trust me, it's a classic. It's been in er, in the mother series before and I can't wait to see it uh, in Earthbound Zero in Earthbound Zero or sorry, Earthbound Beginnings. I'll see you guys next time for another Pal Plays Earthbound. If you liked this episode, then comment, and if you didn't like this episode, then comment and tell me how I can make the next episode so that you would like it. Uh, I release new episodes of Earthbound Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, and next time we'll be going into the Fire Spring to unlock Ness's world. See you guys then!